Welcome to another 5 reasons video. Yeah, we already talked about all jobs in particular, but according to many questions on my live streams and in the comments section of many videos, some people still wonder if it's worth playing a tank in Final Fantasy XIV. And furthermore, if it is wise to start tanking as a newcomer. So let me try to put some emphasis onto the pros and cons of tanking. First of all, the whole topic depends heavily on the type of content you want to tackle as a tank, DPS or healer job. Do you want a fast playthrough of the game, doing your daily roulettes and dungeons or do you plan on venturing further into the raiding scene with extreme trials, savage raids or ultimate fights? In either way, always remember that in Final Fantasy XIV you can play all jobs on a single character. And when you have started your journey with one already, all secondary choices you make and jobs you take will have an increased leveling speed for all sorts of content that provides experience points. So there's no reason to not place multiple jobs in the same role, especially have one job for each role available, that mostly brings with tons of advantages for your daily game enjoyment. But without further ado, let us see if that does apply to the tanking role as well. Simply in short, yes it does. The first main reason to always have a tanking job in your backup or already starting to main it completely is the speed and pace of clearing content until endgame. And even there, when looking for a group in duty or party finder, while in other games the difference of playing a DPS job compared to a tank is more significant when it comes to kill mobs in open world areas or when questing, in Final Fantasy I easily subscribe to the idea that a Dark Knight, Warrior, Gunbreaker or Paladin can actually quest in the same speed and pace like melee jobs or casters could, simply due to the fact that as a tank your rotation is always a bit simpler than those of the DPS counterparts, and even here mobs won't have enough life to survive a whole rotation of any job. So bursting them with whatever you have access to is the best thing you can do. And as melee jobs who have kinda quick access to their bursting tools, they do still have some position requirements and you cannot kite or trick your enemy in turning around when needed, at least not for a long period of time. Tanks on the other hand don't have long rotational buildups and no positional requirements at all, so they are able to deal with foes much more straightforward. Above that you won't be able to pull tons of mobs together as a DPS job, where tanks are easily capable to do so featuring all of their self-healing potential and defensive tools to survive and mitigate incoming damage. So when looking at questing, you're easily on par with any DPS job with mostly a much action-driven and straightforward combat, lacking the hassle with positionals or long casts that could possibly run into the void because your target died already. Plus being able to pull mobs together which can actually increase your completion time. But while questing and clearing things on the world map of certain areas may not be the most powerful strength of a tank compared to a DPS job, in duty finder scenarios where you have to queue up for specific dungeons, this turns into the real deal. If you ever queued up for content that is not constantly finding a lot of participation as a DPS job, you will love to do the exact same thing as a tank, because even on dead duties, tanks will mostly face instant invites. Above that, which is another benefit of being a tank, as these dungeons and duty finder content is not that difficult, you can set the pace for it. Of course, a healer or damage heavy DPS job are able to boost the speed of dungeon clears as well, but not anything close to a confident tank, taking things into the way they need to be taken. So if you ever stumbled over endless queue waiting times, not so on the tanking department and especially in Endwalker, this will become more prevalent than ever because of no new tanking job being announced and everybody jumping over to Reaper and Sage. But of course, while you have instant queue times for duty finder scenarios, even in party finder you will certainly face the situation that tanks are a rare species. Of course, some mechanics put up some special responsibility on the mitigation role, but let us be honest, each fight on extreme or higher difficulty levels needs to be learned from each role's perspective. And most anxiety comes from people being frightened because they kinda have to relearn the whole thing again when switching. But when starting with that specific role directly, all of them kinda have the same difficulty level of tasks to accomplish. So if you are here for the all-in tanking main and feel passionate about it, in puck and party finder situations you will always find a group for all sorts of content and you could even throw in that you're new to the boss or not 100% sure how to deal with it. Most of the times I experience the situation that all will be super helpful and glad to have found a tank at all. Or I even had many generous and helpful tanking mates that were patient and explained my tasks step by step. And in some fights I honestly believe that the off tanks job could possibly be the easiest to accomplish among all tasks your group has. So give it a try and get your spots in literally every form of content instantly. Another thing that I'm always thinking about is forgiveness. 
Yes, not in a religious way, but as a tank you have a much heftier stand than healer or all other DPS jobs, simply from the fact that mitigation does not only work as a main tank. If you step into avoidable mechanics or take avoidable damage, you are punished much less than any other role, especially on the mechanics that are able to kill your local black mage or white mage with one blow. Chances are very good that you as a tank can survive them and have no dying debuff being applied. So tanks, while not being in the main tanking spot, but even there, are much more difficult to kill and doing mistakes that don't cause your group to fail for certain mechanics will happen unnoticed from time to time. But of course, don't use this trait to ignore the fact that you're still mortal and stepping into these mechanics may still cause trouble for your healer. So try to compensate that with the best parries you can pull off after being reminded of your mortality. Last but not least, you are the boss. Didn't you say all the party members have to pull the same weights and have the same responsibilities and level of tasks to accomplish? Basically speaking, this is true. But behind these aspects, being the tank, especially the main tank, can often feel like you are the one to guide your party into victory. You are the one deciding on the strat you're choosing. And above all that, you are the one deciding when to start into the fight. Yes, in extreme or higher difficulty level content this may not be relevant and mostly the person with the best rating knowledge and experience is going for the leading role, but at least in duty finder or party finder content with randoms, I witnessed some very tough tanks pushing us through all the obstacles to come and when playing tank for yourself, you also get drawn into that leadership role but in a very positive way. If you want that status, people are mostly happy that you take it. But otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, releasing all pressure by telling that you're new to this fight or dungeon will lead to acceptance and people still being thankful that you at least take up the courage to try it out. Of course, do not join farming parties when you certainly have no clue about what's going on, but otherwise you will undisputedly have this special status and while healers are receiving most of the flame, tanks will earn the fame, except they're not splitting bosses that clearly indicate to be split. This is when you should definitely use your tools to communicate with others and if you have no clue or something seems unusual, ask people around you for advice. It's still an MMO with real people playing together. But after all, this secret leadership status does indeed offer something satisfying, if you're the person to accept it. Okay, after all those rose-colored words and opinions about tanking, there has to be a downside to it, otherwise the demand for tanks in queues or party finals would not be that high, right? Yes, first of all, even if that is just a mindset related aspect, people still believe that taking up the tanking role does require to have already played all sorts of dungeons or tanked in other MMOs. So they are hesitant to become what seems to be the most important role in every game featuring the trinity of classes. But just do it. We all started as tanking beginners and somebody had to do the first steps anyways. And like mentioned many times, people are already thankful that you have taken up the sword and shield, the great axe, the two-handed sword or the gunblade to lead your party into a glorious raiding future. So what is the real gripe with tanking and the reason why you should actually make a decision on that topic? Comparing the rotational requirements and complexity level of tanks to other games tanking, this is still far superior in my opinion. But when looking at their DPS counterparts, rotations feel a bit underwhelming sometimes. And as many players, me included, really love the complexity of rotations this game has to offer, I will always stay DPS main due to the fact that offering more variety and alternation in the abilities and buttons that I'm supposed to click feels more rewarding and satisfying. On the other hand, and leading back to the fact that you can play more jobs on one character, before optimizing gear for my summoner or red mage in a fresh expansion, I would always push up a tank directly after reaching endgame. Just for the fact that switching between jobs and especially between roles is the most satisfying thing you can do in this game. And especially for being so different on the tasks and mechanics they need to take care of, raiding or even normal dungeons and duties never get boring. So whatever choice you make, don't hesitate to try out another role as well. Never leave your job selection lack a possible tanking job at all. Because of the many advantages it offers having access to one. So become a main tank. Become an old tank or just rotate freely according to the mood you find yourself in. And you will easily run into the best playing experience this game has to offer in PvE battle content. I hope that this video helped you out in choosing a role and if you want to learn more about the specific jobs and classes featured in that role, check out my 5 reasons to play series to dig deeper and get a good impression of all of them. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy.